On May 5th, 2023, a unique and special reunion commenced, attending band members from 1979 and 1985's classes reflected upon their time as members of Benton High School show band of Arkansas. Here are some interesting reasons why some people joined the band. You'll laugh when I tell you why I joined the band. Where I moved here from, in elementary school, I lived somewhere else. I wanted to play the bells. And to play the bells, you had to start on the flute. So I did a year of flute, moved here, excited to play the bells and be on drumline? No. In Benton, you started on drumline and you had to have a year of piano to play the bells. I did not have either. I got stuck with flute all the way through my senior year. I wanted to be a drummer. I mean, still to this day, I would want to be a drummer. My boys were all drummers. My daughter played a flute, so. Um, I wanted to start off, uh, music has always been uh, just a tremendous force in my family. Um, my father was a musician and a singer and he danced. Uh, my mom sang. Uh, the music was always just a big part of my family. Um, and in high school, I was always in the music department. I was, I directed a choir that she was in. Um, I uh, uh, played clarinet, I, I played drums, uh, but I started out with, uh, with clarinet simply because that was the only instrument that I could play that my mom didn't just cringe. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, as I progressed, I, I went ahead and got on the drum line. And by then, I was OK. One, my lips, I can't play brass instruments because you have to be able to buzz your lips, and I can't. Um, so that left the woodwind instruments or percussion. And my mom didn't like the, the idea of, um, of me banging on drums all day every day in the house because we had a small house at the time uh, but the clarinet and the clarinet was the only one that I picked up and could play that didn't that didn't emanate this horrible screech and they can they can they can they can be cringeworthy sounds but uh, yeah it just it seemed to fit at the time uh, both my parents and my grandparents were very supportive of me in, in band. Yeah. And probably part of the band boosters. Yeah. <laughs> my mother made me more than supportive. She was forceful. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I objected totally. I didn't want to do it. Oh, yeah. I, I hated it. I tried to quit every, at least once a week. And Mr. Townsend was my band director at Westside. And I, Mr. Townsend hated me. Mr. Townsend was mean. Mr. Townsend picked on me. I hate band. I don't want to do that. I mean... I had all kind of excuses. And my mother would look at me and say, that's fine, go outside. My sister and I were, my, my mother was totally inept and my father played trumpet. She wanted to do it and couldn't, and so she took it out on me. I, I did it for fun, I wanted to learn how to play an instrument, yeah. I joined the band because I've always been musical. It's what I do for a living still. Um, music has always been a part of my life. My mother couldn't sing, my father couldn't sing but for some reason I could. And watching my older brothers go through that process and learn uh, really inspired me to do the same. Um, I joined band in Bryant in the sixth grade. Um, my, daddy, I, I, my daddy wanted me to be in band. He used to play tuba and went to the Rose Bowl, Rose Parade a long time ago. Um, he wanted me to play an instrument. He wanted me to play tuba. Well, I'm kind of small, so the tuba was bigger than me. So I ended up playing the oboe. <laughs> yeah. Our music teacher in elementary school was Mrs. Townsend, our um, band director's wife, and she was a phenomenal music teacher. And she inspired a love for music. And my mother, took us to parades every time we had a parade in town and I loved watching the band go by and listening to the band and those two things uh, put me on the path to band.
Oh, no, it's because my mother said I was going to be in band. I wanted to take Spanish class, and she said, well, why don't you be in band? I still can't speak Spanish, but I'm still involved in music programs. I play piano. I love music, but I joined the band because it was a group activity um, that you could start really younger other than sports. Because when, when I was in school, sports, it was usually either like football or so this is something that you could have a mixed group doing lots of things um, and everybody had a lot in common. So we had wonderful friends and made the best memories. So we stuck with it. I first or originally joined band in the seventh grade. Mr. Townsend was my seventh grade through junior year uh, band director and um, so he uh, he instilled us a good work ethic and um, challenged us to do better and um, so yeah there was a lot of camaraderie. This next section is dedicated to random stories and memories that people have given us. The formative years of my life really were spent uh, those six years in, in band and I uh, really learned a lot about uh, myself learned a lot about working uh, with a team and those were really the formative years that set me up for success the rest of my life. I have a lot of fond memories of how we transitioned from the old style of marching band to the new drum corps style. We were the innovators of that back in the uh, mid-1970s. The exhibition band at MBA. That would be my we biggest one. Yeah. We went up to national competition in and Whitewater, Wisconsin. Instead of being a band in competition, we were the band that the directors learned their new skills on. So we went up with no show. We had one week to learn a show, and then we marched it. So that was pretty intense. Yeah, we had to learn, we had to learn an entire show in a week. That marching band was one of the uh, test bands that uh, uh, competed at the national level. Uh, they, they went around the country and uh, they showcased that style and other bands learned from what Benton was doing. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. We, I remember marching, uh, we went to a high school game in Little Rock, I think it was at Hall High, and we performed at halftime. Well, just before the game, there was this torrential rain. I mean, it was heavy and it was a big mud game. Everybody was covered in mud, and all the football players. Well, we go out to the halftime to do our performance and it's ankle deep of water and mud. So we're splashing, marching in the mud and doing our performance. Uh, and then um, I don't know if it was that year or another year at the same thing, but we were performing. We finished at the end of the game, we beat them. They apparently didn't like that, and uh, as we're going back to our buses, uh, we had to hurry up and get on the bus because the rocks and sticks were being chunked at us because we beat them. <laughs> so that's some of those crazy memories. A lot of other crazy memories. Uh, I remember performing at MBA, the Marching Bands of America, up in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, we went up there as a show band, and uh, you may have gotten Tony's story about how the show band of Arkansas came about. A lot of us here were in that show band, as they called it, as Mr. Townsend dubbed it. Uh, and we were very loud performers so that we could catch people's attention. And, you know, they wouldn't be sitting around in the stands blabbering during halftime. They had to listen to us because we were so loud they couldn't hear themselves talk, so they had to listen. But uh, NBA was great. We performed before 15,000 people. Uh, and being the show band and lab band for the NBA, they taught us how to do the entire routine and learn the music for NBA during that one week. So we went there without a performance plan, without the music, and we learned it all and performed it in a week. And blew everybody off the field. And we weren't in competition with the other bands. We were called a lab band. We were just the band that was being taught. And we did a great job. And we've got some people have taken pictures. And somewhere we've got a film of it that uh, we've got on video. So uh, it's a, it was a great time and a lot of fun up there in Wisconsin. And, you know, I would say like the friendships that we formed. You know, it was just a, it was a lot of camaraderie. We just had a lot of good times. Um, I really liked going, to, I liked the football games. I liked 
marching and performing. I like to go into the competitions. Um, the year, the summer after we graduated, we went to Whitewater, Wisconsin and performed there as a, a, as a lab band for Bands of America. Uh, and that was a nice little way to sort of go out on a high note after we graduated and still be part of that excellent band. I went to Wisconsin twice. Um, it was fabulous. It's yes. very. That's one of my best memories. My best memories. Yeah. yeah. We stayed in a dorm for the first time. At the college mm -hmm. dorm. As a college. It was. It was at a college, and we got to stay at a dorm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a place in the basement where you could order like frozen pizza, yeah. and they would cook it in a little cooker, and that was so exciting. I didn't like the community bathrooms. Well, I got used to it. Lot. Yeah. I, I always like my own tell, bathroom. tell people I'm not <laughs> afraid to change clothes in front of them because yeah. we changed on the school bus in the back of the bus. Yeah. You know, somebody would hold up like a blanket oh, and yeah. we would like change behind I them. About that. You know, because the, co the costumes, the, yeah. the, the band uniforms, band uniforms was hot. hot. Yeah. You know, and they football season starts pretty early. Yeah. And, you know, when you march, you get work with sweat and you're nervous and it's hot and you sit at that ball game and the cheerleaders are all out there in their little bitty skirts. Yeah. And, which was nice and warm in the winter time. In the winter, it was good because we yeah. wore thermals. So it was like at the beginning of the season, we were hot, and later on we were going, na, 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 na. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're warm and you're not. But anyway, yeah. It, it sounds kind of strange, but for me, uh, a little bit of it was just uh, the bus rides you know, to the games and, and events and things. That's when you got to sit and talk with people. and. Uh, you know, you were going to something that you were looking forward to, uh, but it, it's it's strange. But I remember that more than the music we played or anything else. It was it was the trips with people. Oh, do I have band camp stories? Um, yes, this is for John Larson, if he ever sees this. My roommate from band camp in the seventh grade had to ask the RA at Henderson State University to change rooms because my feet smelled so bad that he could not stay in the room with me. That's my band camp story. We were all like family. I mean, I, uh, band was, band was everything. Uh, I, friends, uh, the music was great. Mr. T was awesome. Uh, very much a perfectionist. Uh, I loved band. When mom took me out and put me in choir, I didn't like that very much. But that, but I still stayed, you know, with the band people and I had my choir friends and a lot of band people were in choir. Band camp. Yes, I do remember because we had a band camp at Henderson State University at one time. And the only real big memory I have was uh, we were, it was a day, I don't remember if we were goofing, we were goofing off. And we were in one of the dormitories up on the top floor, I think. And I remember some guys goofing around, particularly Terry Love. I don't see him here. I'm not sure if he's here yet. But uh, him and I want to say Dennis Capel or one of the other guys, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, being kids and goofing around, and it was summertime, so there wasn't any college students there. But I remember they took a, a uh, one of the fluorescent light bulbs had gone out in the hallway or something. And they threw it out the top floor and it went all the way down and it just instantly turned into dust when it hit because it's just poof. And uh, I just remember that from band camp. It was like I said, we were just goofing off and everybody's like sneaking around hiding because we're like, I wonder if the security saw. <laughs> so that was one of the memories of band camp. Uh, I'm trying to remember anything else, but some of the goofy stuff we used to do. So don't repeat, don't do that yourself. That's dangerous because we didn't even say, look out, we just chunked it. <laughs> There was nobody down there as far as I could see, but <laughs> anyway, so that's some of the crazy stuff we've done. My most cherished memories would be probably the road trips, uh, whether it be to an away game, those were always fun, West Memphis and all the way down to Texarkana, as well as during some, I can't remember if it was spring breaks or summers, we might go to Six Flags, whether it be in St. Louis or in the Arlington, Texas area. It was fairly difficult. One of the most, uh, in the marching band, one of the most challenging things we ever did was we 
marched in a parade in Little Rock. It was actually started in uh, North Little Rock and we had to march over a bridge and with all the marching, the bridge started shaking and um, then we had to go several miles past that through the streets of Little Rock. So it became, being in the percussion, we're playing the cadence and we got really tired, so. I only went to band camp one year at Henderson State and that made me decide not to go to Henderson State because they had community bathrooms and the food was terrible. And that was my determining factor in going to Arkansas State because Arkansas State had sweet bathrooms and the food was much better. <laughs> and that was that's that's what band camp did for me. It sent me to Arkansas State. And if uh, you'll note, we have a memorial table set up. Uh, unfortunately, we, we've lost uh, 14 members uh, of our band family uh, since we were all in school together. And that's part of what this reunion is going to do. There's going to be a remembrance, and we've got all their pictures here, and we're going to read their names and uh, remember those that we've lost, including Mr. Townsend. We're unveiling a very special uh, sculpture of uh, Mr. Townsend this evening that will be donated to the Benton Memorial uh, Athletic Memorial Museum. And so we'll be unveiling a statue of him tonight. From general memories to memories of everyone's director, Mr. Townsend. Well, the, the, the key innovator of all this was our band director at the time, Marshall Townsend. Uh, Mr. Townsend started out at Westside Junior High School, uh, I believe in 1974. And then by 1977, he moved up to the high school and started to change the mindset from the old style of marching band to the new style drum corps that you see today. And it was Mr. Townsend that was the key to that transition. Oh, absolutely. He was here. He innovated it. He built it. He trained us from the time we were in the sixth grade on with that vision in mind. I mean, he was just a brilliant visionary man. He stayed on until 1985. And so he got to see the transition. He got to see us wear our new uniforms. And it was Mr. Townsend that first uh, coined the phrase, the show band of Arkansas. And that's what we were known as back in the day. Before anybody else used that name, we were the original show band of Arkansas. Uh, the Wisconsin stuff, yes. When Mr. Townsend took the band, they changed from being one kind of band style of marching to a different style. It was called core style at the time. And there were places you had to go to learn that, and that was Wisconsin. There was a big program up there, Bands of America, summer stuff. Mr. Townsend, and I, he and I were the first ones that went. And he and I went up in his car the first time. We drove up and went to the camp. Then we came back the next summer, that would be my summer after my senior year, I went as a director. And he and I flew up together and went to the director's meetings. And he had set it up for the rest of some of the, some of the students. They brought a, a, a bus of kids to come up and take clinics in flag, rifle, brass, woodwind, percussion. And they, and they, they did just clinics. And then not long after that was when he got he was asked to take the whole band up. But the first one, I was on the first trip with him back, that would have been the summer of 80, when he went. Townsend, Mr. T was, uh, he was a small guy, but he was very intense. After, mm -hmm. after high school, I ended up joining the Army, and uh, I had drill instructors that were less intense than Townsend. Uh, he was a perfectionist, and um, he treated us like adults, uh, and that was kind of hard on a lot of us because he was always telling people, whatever the problem is, handle it. Just handle it and get the job done. And you and, figured out how to do it. Yeah, and he did not settle for anything other than perfection. And even though we were small, he kind of treated us the way he treated himself, small but mighty. Right. Um, so therefore, when we marched onto the field, everyone knew we were on the field because we were the loudest band on the field. Always, yes. Yes, oh, heavens. yes. Uh, I look back on my time in the band and um, a, lot of, a lot of people or a lot of kids when they're in their late teens, uh, they don't listen to, their, to adults. They think that they know more. 
Um, I, I wish that I had had the appreciation and respect for Mr. T then that I have for him now. Um, I look back on the lessons he tried to teach me and a lot of them just went over my head. And I wish, I wish more than anything I could tell him I'm sorry and what an influence he has been on me in my adult life. He's the one that taught you that it was okay if you messed up, but turn around and do it again. Do it again. And he would say that again from the top, again from the top, over and over. Don't stop until you get it right. Right. And you, you just carry that through your entire adulthood. And if it's not right, if it's not good, do it again. Mr. Townsend was a very large part of me becoming a band director, very large. Uh, when he, I was here a year and then he took the band, I had him in junior high at Westside back when Westside and Eastside were the junior highs and he taught at both of them and I had him at Westside and then I was over here one year with another director then he came in and started his career as the high school director here my junior year and uh, I was playing, I, he put me on percussion because clarinets aren't that integral to a marching band but he needed somebody in the percussion section, he knew I could do it so I was in the percussion section during marching band and then played bass clarinet during concert band. When I student taught in 83, the fall of 83, I came back to Benton High School and taught here for a semester with him, as, as they call them student interns now, we called them student teachers back then. Uh, it, it's hard to call him, it, I never could call him Marshall, even though he insisted, uh, it was just Mr. T. Uh, I can't, you just can't do it. It just won't come out of my mouth. <laughs> it just won't. And Mrs. Townsend is Mrs. T. And that's, that's just the way it is. A lot of great memories of band activities. A lot of memories of Mr. Townsend yelling at the percussion group. Usually it was the percussion guys, uh, but sometimes other people. But hey, that's, you know, cranky band directors, they're always like that. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot. And, you know, there's a lot of fond memories uh, because he wasn't all teeth and bark. He was. Uh, he was a good guy, he knew when you did something really well, he was good at complimenting you. Here's uh, some advice the given from older pay, band pay members to newer band um, members. Develop friendships that are going to last a lifetime. You know, I'm seeing people walk in the door now that I haven't seen in 40 years, and I want to stop this interview now and go give them a hug. You know, just develop those relationships now. Those friendships will last a lifetime. Practice, practice, practice. You should always practice. Yes. And it stinks, but you should do it anyway. It's the only way to get better. Um, let's say as you get, sometimes as you, you get older, you know, you, you, you see the same people in school every day, you kind of take them for granted, but then when you graduate and you go to college, a lot of us, of course back then we didn't have Facebook, Facebook didn't come along until 20 or more years after high school, but but it's it's cool to be able to see people again that, that you knew when you were younger, so this is a special event. So thank you for doing this, and good luck to you all in school. Personally, I wish I'd held on to playing my trumpet longer. I, I, it, I think I still have a trumpet, but I haven't I haven't moved the valves on it in a couple of decades. It would probably be a good good thing to remember to do that every once in a while, just to maintain the skill. Don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, listen to the ones who came before you, i.e. your band directors, upperclassmen, and understand that just because you might not be the best musician now doesn't mean you won't be in the future. That's, yeah. S study before you decide which instrument you want to play. Check, check, check all, check all about them. You know, like if you want to play flute or if don't just decide to play one instrument. Make sure you do your homework first before you decide. Learn as much as you can. Uh, enjoy it because uh, you know one of these days you're going to be a little gray-haired, and uh, you, you you'll look back on those memories and the things that you've done in band uh, and other events that you've done in your life, but also band. And you know we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot of things. Practice is the most important thing commitment to practice and uh, honing your craft and I know from personal experience if you stop using that talent that you lose that talent I literally cannot play an instrument anymore <laughs>
just stick with it, you know, and um, do the work, you know, put in a little bit of practice. Um, but um, it's just so well worth it, you know, and it's just, it's more than just about um, band, you know, it's really developing lifelong relationships and um, really deep relationships, you know, not superficial friendships, but really deep relationships and people that will get you through uh, different things that you might be going through in school. Just throw yourself into it, be part of it. And, you know, I would say for, for band students, just throw yourself into it and, and make a lot of friends. You don't have to be the best player. You just have to participate. You have to be enthusiastic. The benefits that you're going to get out of this program are going to stick with you throughout your life. Stick with it. It just gets better. Um, even if it's rough in the beginning, it, just, it gets better and better. Enjoy what you're playing. Uh, you're going to create lifetime memories. Just keep with it. Uh, you know, follow your heart. Uh, if, if you're dedicated, um, you could be a professional musician. During this one-of-a-kind reunion, past members of the Benton High School Show Band of Arkansas came together to share their cherished memories, commemorated their beloved band director, Mr. Townsend, and attended a private concert by the current BHS band. Through this reunion, the band honored the past, recognized the present, and are dedicated to the future.